play Try to make the best of my time But only love can break your heart Try to be sure right from the start Yes, only love can break your heart What if your world should fall apart? Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Only Love Can Break Your Heart by Neil Young from the incredible After the Gold Rush record. Really lovely song, some interesting chords, kind of mostly easy open stuff, but a few little variations that add a real sweetness to the song. It's got a lovely 6-8 time feel as well, so we'll talk a little bit about the strumming. Uh, one thing to note though, on the original recording, uh, there's a capo used at the second fret. So if you want to play with the original After the Gold Rush recording, you need to put a capo on the second fret. I'm playing it without a capo, and it seems most of the time when Neil plays it live, he plays it using these exact grips, but without a capo. So he's lowered the key a little bit from the original recording. But so, yeah, you want to play along with the After the Gold Rush? Capo second fret. Otherwise, I'd recommend leaving the capo off. Let's get stuck in. Check out the chords. So the first chord we need here is a G7 chord. That is a third finger, third fret, thicker string. Second finger, second fret on the fifth string. That note is optional. I often leave it out, but seems to work pretty good for most Neil stuff. Three open strings and first finger going down the first fret of the thinnest string. Really important that you get that note. It goes lovely into the C. You can hear the voice lead going da, 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 da. Fits with the melody as well. So G7 three strums then C to F now usually it's going to be an F major 7 so you can see there from the C drop little finger down underneath the third finger third fret on the fourth string second finger moves down one string so it's on the second fret of the third string leave the thinner string open and mute the thicker string the tip of the third finger will mute there C to F to G, now we separate third and fourth fingers to the outside two strings. This is a regular G, so third fret, nothing on the, the fifth string is muted by the underneath of the third finger. Three open strings, little finger, third fret on the thinner string, and then it drops back to the G7. So we have one, two, three, one, two. major 7 and G to G7 and that's what's going on for the verses as well the G7 is coming in on beats 4 5 and 6 remember we're in 6 8 so we got this 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 G7 C 2 3 F 5 6 G 2 3 4 5 6 on the G7 again See there, the, the melody is starting there on beats four, five, and six again. When you were young and F your G, G7, C to F to G, G7, C major 7. Da. Okay, so C major 7 is the next chord, just like a regular C, but we lift off the first finger. Okay. I was only thinking of F that I was playing C major 7 the best of my F G7 F and we're into the chorus so let's just go through that verse again so remember it starts on the G7 when we were C and F a G 
seven C to F to G G seven C major seven and it's to F for a whole bar C major seven again rest of the F two three G seven F major seven again to E minor seven now you can play just a regular E minor it does look like Neil often just plays a regular E minor to get this note here it just fits really lovely with the melody you can either use first and second fingers and little finger here third fret on the second string or you can play it that way using fingers two and three stretch out with the four I think that's more commonly the way that Neil approaches I find that one a little easier the next chord's pretty interesting it's a D minor nine open fourth string second finger second fret third string first finger first fret second string and open thinner string okay sometimes I think Neil's playing this which is a D minor seven so first finger is just buying the thinnest two strings second finger second fret third string open fourth string either that or that will work this one fits with the melody a little bit better but this one has a nice clash with the melody which also sounds nice and then we have a G and a G7 thing again going in the chorus so the chorus on its own so but only love can break your heart try to be sure right from the start yes only love can break your heart trot if your world should fall apart As with most Neil Young songs, getting the strumming and the feel right is really a key thing for learning this song. It's in 6-8, so I think a really good start is to just play it straight through with six strums to the bar. Just all down picks, so you'd think uh, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. seven for a whole bar then it goes to F chord C major seven then going to F then G seven chorus is an F and then E minor seven then D minor nine and then to G G seven F major seven and then seven then to D minor nine and then to G so that would definitely be the first thing the first approach that I think you should get consistent rhythm getting used to keeping the hair moving consistently that is the most important thing if you're doing any Neil Young stuff is the the feeling of the strumming hands got to be really consistent and even and relaxed if you don't get that stuff together it's never going to quite feel right so I'd recommend that you get super confident with the chord changes all of the grips and playing along with the original song with the all simple down strums before you take the strum any any further interesting thing going on here is that on the G seven we have those strums played on the beat still which you already be familiar with this four five six one two and three now all of the rest of it is this pattern one two and three and four five and six and down up down up down up down up down up down up down really good idea just doing this muting the strings get used to the pattern one two and three and four five and six and one two and three and four five and six and one two and three and four five and six and one and three and four five and six and really just work on making that feel nice a great exercise which i did actually today for this very song 
was playing along with the original recording with this drumming, but just with the chords muted, exactly like I'm doing now. Playing along with the original recording and trying to suck in that time feel. Trying to get the feeling of it right, because it's not mechanically down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's not that. It's It's got a feel. It's a ballad as well, so you've got to feel like relaxed and... It's almost your hands falling, but you still got to keep the pattern consistent. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and one, two, and three, and four, five. And just really working on that. If you put in an extra strum here and there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. You're just trying to get that one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and one, two, and three, and four, five. Really making it feel good. And then remembering that on the G7 you'll have the one, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Back to the regular strumming. Four, five, six, all downs. But your hand is still moving consistently. Shouldn't really matter, like. The feeling of the hand is the same all the time. It's got to feel real relaxed. You'll know when you get it. And you've got to practice it. So I think all of these things, there's a tendency to think, oh, because it's such a simple pattern, I'll only have to do it a few times and it'll come right. But what most people find is that you start with a pattern like that. You go through, oh, yeah, it's really easy. But if you keep practicing, you start to notice little anomalies, little things that aren't quite sitting right, strums that are a little bit early or a little bit late or bits where it feels a little bit disjointed. And particularly if you're going to sing with it, you've, you've got to get that automated up because you can't be thinking about your strumming while you're singing. So you're really just trying to get that. You know, it's the key thing for the whole song. The chords are not that difficult. And actually the strumming pattern's not that difficult either. But simple isn't always easy. Okay, it's a simple pattern, but getting the feel, getting it really feeling good that's a little bit more tricky and worth a little bit of work i really hope you enjoyed this neil young lesson if you didn't know i'm a massive fan of neil young and i've got loads and loads of his lessons over on the website you might want to go and check out uh if you wanted to always learn old man or heart of gold or whatever i've got pretty super detailed lessons on all of those uh i'm yeah, I like studying Neil. He's, he's got a lot of stuff going on that I find really enjoyable, and hopefully you will as well. So do go and check that out, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.